Let me read to you a passage from the first chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 45 to 51. It's the Gospel for the Feast of St. Bartholomew, the Apostle. St. John writes, Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one about whom Moses wrote in the law, and also the prophets, Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. But Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Here is a true child of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man from John chapter 1 verse 45 to 51. We think of friendship with Jesus. One of the winning things about the Gospel of St John is the presence of detail in the events portrayed. John remembered the details and his mind and heart lingered on them. Especially heartwarming are the accounts of the Apostles' first meetings with our Lord. We remember how, in his first chapter, St. John describes the two disciples leaving John the Baptist to follow Jesus, how Jesus turned and invited them to come and visit where he was staying, and how they stayed with him for the rest of that day. They believed. Andrew, one of the two, went to his brother Simon and told him they had found the Messiah. What a momentous conclusion to reach after a few hours of meeting. A question, what led to this? In our Gospel today, from the same first chapter, we have the same sort of thing being described. Philip was called by our Lord, and his meeting with our Lord led him to a full and total conviction that we have found the one about whom Moses wrote in the law, and also the prophets, Jesus the son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Again, a question, what led to this? Philip went to Nathanael and told him. Nathanael was somewhat sceptical, but went to meet Jesus. Christ said he saw him under the fig tree, and his attitude changed to a full and enlightened faith. Rabbi, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. Again, what led to this? Well, our Lord himself said to Nathanael that he had come to belief on simple grounds. Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. These apostles, quickly and very early on, arrived at a true faith in Jesus, a faith that needed to be developed, of course, but nevertheless it was the authentic faith our Lord was seeking. The grounds for their faith were simple but sufficient, enabling them to arrive at a true knowledge of who Jesus is. Basically, it can only be accounted for as due to their being properly disposed. They were marvellously disposed for God and for, for whatever he might do and reveal. That is an important lesson for us in the matter of faith. Our Gospel passage not only tells us important things about the dispositions needed to be a ready and true disciple of Christ, more importantly, it tells us about Christ himself. Consider the person who so quickly showed to Philip that he was the long-predicted Messiah. Consider the person who changed Nathaniel's scepticism at his first words to him. In terms of its about, 
it can be compared to the change wrought in Saul of Tarsus on his way to Damascus. But this occurred not as a result of a dramatic heavenly intervention, but because of a simple meeting with the man Jesus. Nathanael immediately saw that Jesus was not only the Messiah, the King of Israel, but somehow and in some sense the Son of God. There was something about Jesus that made him so utterly convincing, so utterly unique, so utterly exalted in every way to the one who is properly disposed to see it. We beheld his glory, St. John writes. John chapter 1 verse 14. Theirs was an immense privilege to have come to know Jesus so early. Our Lord had lived in Nazareth for 30 years and only his mother and foster father knew who he really was. But with just a little association with him, our Lord revealed his person to these new disciples to such an extent that there was no doubt in their minds that he was the centre of all history and of God's plan for mankind. It is surely difficult to think of anyone like him in the annals of history. The lesson for us? We must strive to be with Jesus and to get to know him. We must live with him, with our hearts truly open to his person, and to the light of God. We must meet with Jesus in faith and live in his company in faith and prayer, asking the Father and the Holy Spirit to enlighten our hearts and minds as to the person of Jesus, just as the hearts and minds of these first disciples were so wonderfully and rapidly enlightened. They had a long way to go, but their start was true and authentic, and it reached a true knowledge of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Let us place ourselves in the simple gospel scene of today and share in the meeting with Jesus experienced by his first disciples, disciples who became members of the Twelve. Life is to be described as a friendship with Jesus, a friendship that includes an authentic and true knowledge of him. Our whole life is to be based on and shaped by that friendship. It is a friendship forged in daily prayer and fidelity to the person of the Master. He lives now, and he calls us to be his friends.